Now we look at a very useful feature in Excel, the feature to give names to ranges. Right? So very often you see that when you're doing lookup, for example, you put in the address of the lookup table, $B, $13, colon, $C, $18, stuff like that. Now this kind of thing, when you look at it in a formula, is very cumbersome to read and then you have to go look down and see what it's talking about and so on. right? And uh, it's not very useful. But what if you're able to give a name to that table and then say look up in this named table and the table name might be something like grade lookup or uh, some other lookup or something textual rather than this dollar x dollar y kind of address. That's what a named range allows us to do. In fact, you can not only give names to ranges but you can also give names to individual cells and we'll see that happening later as well. That is also a very nice convenience feature. Okay, so now we have this and we have said as I was pointing out earlier, the lookup table was called uh, was $E, $13, colon, $F, $19. Now that's pretty uh, cumbersome to look at and it's just painful. You have to look very carefully. Oh, do I have two dollar signs? Do I have one dollar sign? Did I, you know, I, I, did I miss out putting a dollar sign before one thing? All those kinds of questions arise when you do this, right? So named ranges allow you to solve that problem. So what we want to do is to give this whole range, the lookup table, the range E13 to F19, we want to give it a name and in place of the lookup table, we'll put the name. So let's see how we do that. Okay, so that, that's what I'm saying here. Give it a name and use the name instead of the address. Okay, so in order to give the lookup table a name, first select the lookup table, right? So as I've done here, select that whole region only the lookup table, not the title and so on. Just the first to last row or first to last column of the lookup table. And then notice here on the top left corner, there is this small area which shows you the current address. In this case, it is showing you the top left corner of the selected region, right? This is this cell's address is what is showing. Okay, now that is precisely where you can give it a name. Okay, so first select the lookup table and then here, uh, the, the place where I showed you this part, double click it, select it and then type the name you want to give to that lookup table. In this case, the name I have given is grade underscore LKUP. Okay, I would prefer not to use hyphens in names. That is because hyphen is the same as a minus sign and it can be very confusing for Excel. So don't do that. In fact, I suspect Excel won't even allow you to put a minus in a, in a lookup uh, in a named range. Okay, so that's why I used an underscore and this is just a name I gave it, grade underscore LKUP. Now you may say, well, why say LKUP? Why not say lookup? Have it your way. So call it grade underscore lookup or you could say grade underscore table, whatever you like. It's just a name. What appeals to you and what makes sense to you, that's what you should put in there. But don't use a hyphen, use underscores if at all required. Don't, definitely you cannot have spaces within the name. Okay, so now, and then once you type in the name you want, press enter, and now this range has a name. Whenever you want to refer to this range, you can use its name instead of putting its absolute address. Okay, that's the beauty. Don't use spaces or hyphens in, in the name for sure. Now, once you've done that, you can write your lookup formula like this. You can say equals VLOOKUP B2, comma, this is the name that you gave to your lookup table. Grade underscore LKUP is the name I gave. If you don't like it, you would have given a different name, comma two, right? So everything is exactly the same, except that instead of the address of the lookup table, you now give the actual name that you gave to the lookup table. This is so much nicer on the I, okay? It's a lot easier to read and so on. Okay, so that's the whole idea of using named ranges. And after that, you can just copy you know, copy and paste it or simply drag it and everything will work just as fine. Okay, so with the with the named range, you don't have to worry about making it absolute and so on because named ranges are always absolute. Okay, as I had said earlier, you can give names to ranges, but you can also give names to individual cells. Let's see how that might work. Let's go back to the beginning of our sales for a profit forecasting example, 
right? And here we've got the sales units in 2017 is 100,000. And if you remember earlier, in order to put the sales for 2017, we had just said equals I4, right? We had put the address of this equals I4. Okay, now think about the scenario when you're looking at a particular formula and trying to see what the, whether the formula makes sense. So you're reading equals I4, uh, you know, something times I4, etc., etc. Now in the context of a large spreadsheet, looking at an address can be pretty confusing. What if instead we could use the name, right? So now what, let's say that we name the cell as sales units 2017. Again, to name a cell, select the cell, go up here, type the name you want to give to it, press enter. And now that cell has a name. In fact, whenever you go click in the cell, you'll see its name on the top left. Now that the cell is named, okay, if you want to put in similarly this cell, we let's say we call it annual sales growth rate. Okay, so these two cells, I4 and I5 now have names. So you don't have to use their addresses, instead you can use their names. And remember, cell names or range names are always absolute. So with that done, instead of putting equals I4, I can now say equals sales units 2017. Okay, that is a lot more descriptive than the I, I4 thing, right? In fact, if you want, you can put in uh, the names also here. Instead of these descriptions, you can put in the names here. So that when somebody says Salesforce 2000, sales units 2017, go look here, you know exactly what it's referring to. So that just makes it a lot easier. And then now, uh, this formula, now instead of saying uh, e equals dollar uh, $i, dollar $5, instead of that, we can now say equals B4 times 1 plus annual sales growth rate. Okay, so now your formulas are much more human friendly than these Excel addresses and so on, right? This becomes more useful when you have complicated formulas and especially when you're looking at somebody's spreadsheet to make sure the formulas are correct. Okay, so that's a very important thing and I think it's a worthwhile discipline for you to learn and uh, adopt. Especially when you start doing a lot of work in Excel, you will find this to be really useful and again, especially in the context of serious spreadsheets that you're going to use over several uh, times over a long time period and which you're going to keep on changing uh, many times. So then you will find that all of these things are greatly beneficial.